This week, following on from the theme of trying to make the game look better, I've started writing a stylized wind effect. I didn't exactly invent this look, but I still managed to get it to work. Surprisingly enough, the thing I ended up with did actually look quite good, so I'm quite pleased with that. I also figured out why shadows were broken, which caused me to rewrite my shader preprocessor system. I improved my outline drawing system and also found another voxel mesh optimization that allowed me to half the file size and the VRAM usage, and I'm very pleased about that. This is a game about exploration and discovery in a high fantasy world. You discover things, kill monsters, collect items, and just generally discover the world. And why would you want to discover things in the world if the world doesn't actually look good? But now I've got wind effects, well, we're on the path. I make a devlog each week, and you know, you can just subscribe if you really want to. Personally, I'd recommend you do that. So essentially, I want to make something that looks a bit like this. So we got the kind of streaks from the winds appearing quite frequently and then it sort of shrinks down. Now this game was made in like three months. Actually, I think this is quite a complicated job to do. So what I'd essentially have to do is make some sort of 3D spline. Uh, you can see it's working in 3D space because um, when the character's moving around, you can see that like it's not projected onto the top of the screen, right? This looks very procedural. Now my plan to implement this didn't actually involve procedural meshes. Instead, I wanted to use vertex animation and compositor effects to get it done. I created a simple mesh in Blender which would be the basis of the effect. We take a look at what mine looks like at the moment. It looks like that. Uh, so it's kind of... Uh, the whole thing is rendered at a lower resolution and then scaled up. I'm not doing that here. So how about we quickly try and stick them into a different render queue. That's what I expected it to be. Oh look! Hey! There we go, look at that! That's cute. It's not using it's not using the sampler I wanted though. Yeah! Ah, uh, it's chunky. So you probably won't be able to tell the difference in the uh, YouTube compression algorithm. Thank you YouTube for that. But uh, it's a lot chunkier now. I would just add the value, hopefully. So it'd be F plus S. Moment of truth. <laughs> Cool. So then if I add S on, finally, we should get, oh, lower resolution. Yes! <laughs> Lads, I'm a genius. I can make it even chunkier, actually. It just looks weird. Like, I don't know if I'd be able to say what that is if I just saw that in the game. Oh, that looks cool. Okay, that, that is a bit more of what I'm looking for. So I think these things need to be a lot thinner. There needs to be one axis where they're super thin. Yes! This is what I want. Okay, I do like that. They just need to be a bit longer. When they're close up, they look cool. When they're at the back like that, they just get really odd really quick. That's nice. I like, very snacky. I think I need to up the amplitude on this bad boy. Except I probably don't have enough topology to do it properly. Yeah, I don't really, do I? And I suppose if I make some of this stuff random, you get some like that that are just too small and just a bit dull. Because you'd want to have a uniform wind direction, wouldn't you? You wouldn't want like total randomness. Oh, actually, no, that one was moving in a bit of an offset, wasn't it? Uh, let's make her bigger. <laughs> uh, what would I have to do? An orientation. So I pass the offset in there. New node, dot set, orientation. Ooh! Huh. Okay, yeah, that's not right. Um, but it's probably going in the wrong direction. So just negate that. That might actually look correct. Ooh. Oh! Oh, it does. God, I'm smarter than I think. I feel like there's a lot less than there was before. It's not going over there, is it? Uh, so that way they should never be able to leave. Even if they're at weird angles. Which looks like it's true, sort of. They seem to be bouncing back and forth, but... Yeah, look at this wind glitching. What do you think you're doing in wind? How dare you? Well, they're actually doing it now. <laughs> also, the shadows are rendered at a much higher <laughs> higher resolution than they actually are, which is probably good, because otherwise they'd look weird. And then run it in the game. <laughs> it's very exciting. Right, we getting anything? Uh, I can see the shadows. Uh, uh, sorry, the clouds. <gasps> oh! There it is! I just need more of them, I think. I need to ramp these numbers up. These are rookie numbers. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. Oh, they do look good. I like, I like. The, the problem is they probably also need to be like spread out in the world as well. So they don't all arrive at once. Oh, here they come. 
Oh, it's D-Day all over again. Yay. The wind arrives. Oh, I love it. I love it. As long as there's enough of them, it's good. <laughs> do you know, so I've managed to get away from not having to do like generating splines in vertex shaders or anything like that. Because there was me thinking that I was not going to have any choice but to do that. But actually this looks perfectly fine. Um, I think I might up the amplitude for the ones that are moving very fast. But other than that, there are options. And um, I don't know, I mean it looks what I expected it to look like. And uh, I also need to get them to fade out rather than just disappear. But this, that's the same for the, uh, the overhead clouds as well. They're another one that needs fixing actually, because if you zoom out far enough, then they just disappear. Oh, there's lots of things I actually really like about this at the moment. It is still running quite slow. I think that's because I'm rendering terrain twice, which I shouldn't be doing. Okay, I probably need to try that in my testing world. Oh! Okay, well they come in batches still. That's not what I want. You can kind of see them spawning in. Do you know what? The interesting thing as well, I don't have to think about clipping. Because it'll never clip. Because even if it goes underneath a hill, oh, it'll still draw on top. It doesn't take depth into account at all. Hmm. I don't think about that. Oh, this can you take depth into account? It can't just add to the top of it. It's so sad. I feel broken inside. Okay, there's some weirdness with it. Just a little bit. But I mean, it is a good effect. I do like it. So like all things in this game, it's subject to change and hopefully will improve. Now I spent most of this week on the vertex optimization, which I thought would only take like a day, but it ended up taking two and also on fixing the shadows. I'm just trying to figure out why the shadows are broken because you can see they do sort of still work, like you can see the lines. And I've just kind of come to a realization, I'm not convinced that the actual proper shader code is running for the shadow generation. I'm not convinced when I move to that preprocessor for the shaders that any of those um, offsets actually got applied. Um, none of this stuff will have made it in, which is great. Looks like I've managed to actually bring the shadows back to life. Essentially all I had to do was properly define what the um, Ogre API calls a caster pass. It took me a while to realise but what it's actually doing at one point is splitting it off so it calculates the renderable hash here and then calculates the caster hash here. So remember these two things have different hashes and the hash determines which shader to use and blah blah blah. My things were defined here but they weren't defined here is basically what you need to know. Which is sad and it took me a while to figure that out because I've got to admit it's not very well documented. But um, it is a better system now because I'm doing it based on um, what's in the renderable. So here, um, which means I don't have to properly define it with data blocks. And it used to be that if you didn't have the right information in the right data block then it would all break. So doing it based on renderables is much better than doing it based on material. So that is good. So that's it for this week. I will say that a lot of the technical work that I spent a bit of time this week banging my head against it gets skipped over because it doesn't make good content, but it was a bit of an arduous one this week, to be totally honest. But I do like the wind shader effect. That looks really good. As always, leave a like and a comment. It does help the game out, at least I think. The algorithm's a bit mystic sometimes. And next week, I'm probably just going to keep doing the same thing. I'm quite enjoying trying to make it look good. Um, it's kind of been on the docket for something to do for a while. And um, also it's a skill I haven't really practiced very much. So it's nice actually like problem solving these things because they're kind of like, they're unknowns. They're like problem solving unknowns. And a lot of the actual writing code bit, like I know how to do that at this point. So writing code that makes things look good. Wow, that's like art and code at the same time. I don't know how I feel about that. And if you want to know more about how I'm making my game look good, then why don't you watch this video where I talk about shaders, which are essentially just programmatic ways to make things look good or bad, depending on how sadistic you are.